Hi everyone, it's Daryl again. Uh, today I'm going to have a look at this report on regional rapid rail. So this is a report for adding uh, kind of somewhat high speed rail to the sort of top half of the North Island. This sort of mainly covers sort of the Waikato and over to Tauranga. So I'll just show you a quick look at this report and I'll just um, compare it a little bit compared with other systems that we've got in place already. So here we go, it's called uh, Regional Rapid Rail, RRR, and it's for the Upper North Island Passenger Network. So this is a, a thing for having uh, hourly train services around some of the most highly populated areas of the country, connecting Auckland to Hamilton and Tauranga and other regional uh, towns in the area. I think it's a really good idea. You know, this is the kind of thing that allows you to reduce the numbers of cars, reducing carbon pollution. Uh, this system is designed to have trains with mixed diesel and electric. In the stage one, they've got the, the system split into three stages. And in the first stage, it's just to get some old trains running that, that used to run, you know, in the, maybe in the 19, up to the 1980s. So get, get some of that regional train services back and then in stage two, move on to the high speed trains, not like bullet trains, like th not 300 kilometer per hour trains, but they are looking at trains that go up to 160 kilometers per hour. In New Zealand, we have what's considered in the world a narrow gauge railway that actually limits the kinds of trains we can have. We can't have trains that go 300 kilometers per hour. Our rail network, as far as I understand, was built with a somewhat narrow gauge railway because it allows the railway to take sharper curves and because of a lot of our countryside is mountainous, we have to have a lot of railway lines in the countryside that curve around mountains and hills and go over tunnels and bridges. If we used standard gauge railway, which is what's used in the UK and Europe, I'll just go over these stages and sort of show you where these run. So in stage one, it's to uh, get these old trains up and running and so they're not tilting trains, they're not considered high speed in any way. Uh, they're looking at carrying 350 passengers per year, which is about a thousand passengers per day. And the trains take about 100 people. So, you know, that's like 10, 10 rides fully loaded. But I, I would imagine that there would be more services than, than 10 services per day. They've got three three trains that uh, currently exist, so they can just be uh, updated and, and rolled out. The interesting thing here is it gives you Hamilton and Auckland in approximately two hours and 15 minutes. And now over over here, I searched, uh, so Bredemart to Hamilton. Bredemart is the uh, Auckland Transport Centre where the, uh, uh, right at the bottom of Queen Street, where you can catch trains up to the suburbs of Auckland. So that's used for the Auckland commuter trains currently. So that journey, if you go by car, it's 125 kilometres, it says one hour, 41 minutes. Of course, if you're travelling at peak time, there's probably going to be traffic. That's pretty bad. At the moment, it looks like you can catch some kind of public transport service, uh, train and bus together, which is uh, two and a half hours. So it's already, it's slightly faster than what you would currently have, because you just have that one mode of transport all the way through. So that's quite good. So they'll do that for the first little while, and it would cost, um, what, say, say over five years, two, two million dollars a year for five years to get that service up and running. Obviously, when you build a new service, people who currently rely on driving uh, to make this journey, for people to change over. Most of my videos, I talk about uh, environmental benefits. So getting moving from cars to trains uh, reduces the amount of pollution because it just doesn't need anywhere near as much fuel to carry people on a train as it does in cars because trains are just much more efficient per person as long as the train is moderately full of passengers so after a few years they're looking at moving to uh, stage two which is where it gets really interesting because at that point they're going to buy in some uh, 17 higher speed dual mode trains. So these are trains that will run on the electric network where the electric network is available and it will run on diesel where there's no overhead uh, wires. So these overhead wires could be built if you were um, 
planning on going ahead with this project. So if the sort of the first few years is successful, yeah, you might want to consider electrifying the railway. I think the, the railway that's in Auckland and the main trunk line as it currently is with its overhead electric wires uh, are the, runs at the same voltage. So you just need, um, you only need dual mode trains. Now I've been overseas and I remember, I think there was a, I think you can get a train that goes from Scotland into Europe. And uh, from memory, I think that train service, I'm not sure if it actually if they ever got it off the ground, it was designed to have a quad mode train. So in Europe, they don't even necessarily use the same voltage and AC or DC for electric trains in, in different countries. So when you have trains that run from one country to another, it's very common that the train will take a break and switch over to a different power network in the different countries. So the, the railway lines are built with uh, transition parts where the trains roll across uh, a, a piece of the rail where the uh, voltage changes from one type to another. Uh, up in the driver's cab, they will change over the electronics so that the um, train passes on to the new part of the overhead rail, uh, which has the different voltage. So it's really common and normal to have multi-mode trains. And I don't know places where they have uh, diesel and electric mode trains, but most diesel trains uh, actually have electric drive. It's not a very complicated thing to do. That I'm saying that uh, engineering-wise, this could be uh, just e easy and normal stuff. Because these trains are faster, I think these are saying up to 160 kilometers per hour. These are uh, trains that are bigger, so 300 passenger trains, so three times as big. So that would be uh, kind of like a six car railway train, maybe a five car railway train. So quite quite a reasonable size train. And these would be running uh, pretty often and uh, you'd be able to get to uh, Hamilton in an hour and a half. So that's faster than you can currently drive under moderately good driving conditions. And then you can go to uh, Tauranga. And if I look on this tab here, Britomart to Tauranga. So this trip, if you're driving, takes two hours, 43 minutes. So you, you'd get there faster on the train by, you know, about a quarter of an hour or something like that. Avoid a toll road. Of course, you'll be paying for the train if you're going on the train. Uh, public transport services, it looks like these already take five to five and a half hours. So that actually almost halves the amount of time to get to Tauranga, which is, uh, that's a really good improvement cost of this was $400 million to have those trains and it would carry uh, three and a half million passengers per day, which is about 10,000 per day. Now, if you want to just have a comparison, um, all the Wellington train network carries about 36,000 passengers per day. And I understand that the Auckland passen existing passenger train network um, exceeds the Wellington network for passengers per day now. So I hope I don't really know what the number is there. I'm going to guess it's probably around 50,000 or more per day now. It, it seemed to be quite rapidly uh, growing. And then in stage three, add just uh, more trains and also uh, just optimize the routes a little bit. So at that stage, you'd be getting one hour and 10 minutes between uh, Auckland and Hamilton, which is a really good improvement because you're looking at one hour 40, so it's half an hour faster than you can drive. And it's actually a good benefit. And also, one hour and 10 minutes between Hamilton. This is not an unreasonable commuting time. So you could you could live in Hamilton, walk to the railway station, and just take the train all the way to Auckland, work in Auckland City for the day, and then and then come home. And, and that is, that's quite a convenient commute. This um, one hour and 10 minutes, only about 10 or 15 minutes longer than the current longest commuter railway, railway trips in, in Wellington, but you're covering a much more distance. Also, at this point, they'll be looking at uh, 6 million uh, passengers per year, which is about 16,000 per day. It's about half as many as who travel, a uh, little less than half, 40% of the number of passengers that travel in Wellington currently. Yeah, so the, those are some, some good improvements. Um, and just uh, Waikato's got about half a million people uh, living in it, and um, uh, Tauranga is, you know, uh, maybe, maybe 130, 
thousand people at the moment. So that these are cities that are quite growing. I think you can see that population growth trend. It's just up and up and up. What's, what's that? Over over ten years, it's you know gone up twenty five thousand people. So this project would be getting to that stage three in, in 10 years time as well. Um, interestingly is that this stage three also reactivates some old railway journeys that it used to be able to take, like going to Rotorua from Auckland, Te Kuiti, uh, in the south as well. So uh, it's, it's adding more regional towns uh, as it goes. So here's, here's the North Island of New Zealand all together there. And, and we're looking at getting uh, trips down to Rotorua, which is where there's a lot of tourism there. So I'd imagine that this would be a good alternative for fly-in tourists taking trains um, from Auckland to Rotorua to go and look at those uh, interesting um, volcanic and uh, cultural areas. And also this journey uh, has uh, trips down down here to Tikoiti, which is, um, going to be uh, near Waitomo, so that's another tourism thing as well. So th these would allow um, some interesting tourism trips as well as commuter trains. So the trains could be used for uh, peak commuter services where needed and, and used for tourism as well. Also, you know, um, the, the road situation in this part of the North Island, there's a lot of driving going on across these regions. It's quite There's quite a lot of good roads there now. There's a few roads that have been uh, bad roads for a while as well. Cargo is transferred between Tauranga and elsewhere in the North Island. So uh, it could be in time that you would want to er electrify the railway all the way into Tauranga uh, to uh, move us away for fossil f from fossil fuels completely. If you check out one of my other videos, uh, there's one where I'm reviewing the IPCC conclusions. It's just such a considerable amount of fossil fuels being burned for transport, and we really need to reduce that massively uh, to keep the planet in, in a good condition environmentally. So, yeah, I thought this was an interesting plan. So, yeah, I'm, I'm for railway. This is the region of the country where large population supports this type of thing the most. The sorts of tourism trips that go on would support it and the inter-regional business between major cities of Hamilton, Tauranga, and Auckland. It all makes sense that we should have good passenger services through there. Uh, overall, New Zealand is, uh, doesn't have very high population density. We've got a, a long, narrow country where uh, most of the people live in the North Island, about, what is it? Two thirds, three quarters of people live in the North Island, and and a, and a third of the whole population just just lives in this in this region around here. You know that that makes sense to be the place where we would bring in in rail. There's a lot of places that if, if the population of New Zealand doesn't significantly increase, be very very long time until rail becomes economic compared with just driving cars. So that's that's just how our country is. We're, we're just a, a big sparsely populated country and, and economically uh, having railways all over the place doesn't make sense anymore. We used to have uh, railways with passenger services which would go all around. So Invercargill up through Dunedin, Timaru, Christchurch, all of these places used to have passenger railway. Uh, Wellington all through the North Island. There still is uh, one passenger railway route all the way through the middle of the North Island, but it's just really a tourism trip where you, where you go in very, very nice trains. The trains go very slowly and it has a spectacular view and you take photos and have champagne and drink beer along the way and have nice cafe food during the trip. So it's really a it's very first class experience there where you can enjoy that kind of stuff. But as the regional populations grow in New Zealand, we'll, we'll need things to help reduce the number of cars. And it's just because cars don't scale. Once cities get to a certain size, you know, you just end up looking like Los Angeles with, you know, an eight lane motorway going in and out of the city. And it, it, that seems crazy if, um, if a lot of people um, would rather take the train. And it is the case that if the trains go faster than you can drive, then taking the train is good because it saves you time. Also, while you're on the train, we've got computers and tablets and phones. People can use these things to make productive use, either watch a movie or 
you know, uh, using social media or doing work on their phones and computers uh, while they're. So thanks for watching and listening. Uh, you can you can get a copy of this report. I'll link their, their websites and reports. This uh, I mean I didn't even show you very much of it, but you can go all the way through this report and it will uh, explain you know what what's happening there. And enjoy reading that yourself. Thanks very much for watching.